Democracies International, Freedom in Africa. My name is uh, Freedom Legend Halima Abdelkarim Haliru from the Nigerian Anatomy. And I'm here to speak on the resurgence of freedom giants all over the world by um, through um, corroborating the, of the analogies according to the African Voices International um, outline. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank the Global Freedom Board for giving me the opportunity to speak on such an important topic. And I, I hope I'll be able to do some justice. As we all know, um, the analogies um, in the, Af yeah, according to the Afrom Voices International um, platform, is very important to abide by as freedom giants. And through co um, collaborating them, we're able to uh, uh, have a kind of unified um, goal towards what we are trying to achieve. Collaborating of uh, analogy is a way to bring out the similarity in the analogy. They are all similar. They don't really mean the same thing in individuals around you, in, 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 among people that you your neighbors, your, um, among your people that you work with. All you have to do is that you have to have the love for, you have to have love for your nation. You have to have a zeal to want to um, see your nation thrive. Through um, Pan-African education, this is very achievable. And we don't have to wait for it to be true schools. You as an individual are very capable of addressing individuals that you come across every day. You can start from home, your kids. You can start teaching them about um, Pan-African education, the past history of our great dynasties and uh, kingdoms. You can speak to uh, people that you come across at work. You can speak to people that you come across um, in your everyday interactions, such as maybe your hairdresser, uh, the person that helps you fix your um, car, the person that helps you um, sew your clothes. You can speak to them. Just try to find out from the individual what, what does he think for the state of the nation. Get them talking about that. Then you also put your input when you see where they are going to. Where, usually people tend to be very discouraged nowadays because of the situation of teens. So this is when you come into play. You tell them about, okay, yes, this is happening. This is most likely the reasons behind what is happening. How can we address it? Because we're not like this in the past. You talk about your the past history of um, our great dynasties and kingdoms. We don't dwell on what history tends to dwell in only on um, history that only depicts about when slavery came into being. That is actually what interrupted the development of Africa. It's not our history, it's an interruption in our history. So that is what tends to cause a lot of people to have a kind of, um, how should I say, imbibed self-pity and self-hatred and uh, the spirit of nationalism will be low in such individuals. So when you are able to let them know about how we were in the past, the um, how how we inculcated things that made that helped us to achieve those level of advancement, and then we talk about what led to our situation in the pre presently, and also the things that make it perpetuate. We'll be able to know how to address those issues. We'll be able to know how to inculcate other things that will, be, will, will address the problems and also may hopefully um, help them come to an end. Then we'll be help, we'll, um, imbibing the spirit of nationalism in people, the importance of talking to other people is that not only the spirit that is within you, you want others to also have it. So when you imbibe it in others, then they will also help in spreading the information they will also help in talking to their families the way you must have also um, introduced that spirit of um, nationality in your home, to, um, speaking to your children about the past history, the past greatness of our ancestors, and uh, um, talking about what led to our present predicament and how it can be solved. You were raising in your you'll be able to realize outside on the importance of talking to others because we, should, we cannot underestimate the importance of um how should i say um um the universal consciousness which is a proven scientific fact 
when a lot of people are able to come across such information, it just flows naturally. We can see that 10 years ago, all these groups that encourage um, Pan-Africanism were not in existence. Just imagine 10 years ago, all this was unheard of. So you can imagine it just started with a wave and it is now going through with so much energy. So we cannot predict what will happen in the next 10 years, but it can be towards our own benefit. If we work towards um, whatever we discuss here, if we are able to imbibe it into our everyday lives, if we are able to encourage others to imbibe it into their everyday lives, we'll be able to um, build up on the um, nationalistic spirit within everybody in the, in the country, uh, across the continent. And being a nationalist means that you have to have the love of your nation above everything else. You have to ignore differences in culture, differences in religion, differences in the social classes. We have to make sure that the nationality of is above every other difference that will help the country move forward. We cannot move forward if we continue looking at our tiny differences. This was not an issue in the past. There, there, there are reasons for all these things that came up because we all know the ideology behind divide and conquer, preventing, uh, um, how should I say, unity towards making sure um, in, uh, development is interrupted. So knowing that, knowing that we use that information, we use that uh, um, knowledge to make sure when we see such um, ideologies being introduced, we're able to counteract it were able to address it and were able to kill it at the root source. We should never allow it to be to 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 play with our intelligence, being we already know that these are tactics that are going to be used to um, um, stop uh, nationalistic love and growth within our hearts. So we have to know the importance of nationalism um, when we uh, when when we when we are trying to. Um, address Pan-African education towards our people so that they will also know the importance of it and also imbibe it and also work towards developing it. So that's a little I'll talk about um, nationalism. I will now go to um, discipline as freedom giants, the, the next anal anal analogy, that which is discipline. So at, at okay, so as freedom giants, we have to make sure that we imbibe self-discipline within ourselves. We can only imbibe self-discipline within ourselves if we are able to practice self-control. Self-control is of utmost importance for us to imbibe self-discipline within ourselves. And we will see as if it's um, irrelevant. Self-control is one of the most important things, even you as an adult um, as, and as a parent. We all know that children look upon us to be who they are. So we look at the stages of development. When we see children below the toddler age, they tend to be more impulsive. You cannot really say that a child has to have that self-discipline or self-control. But once they start surpassing those stages, they tend to look upon you to see how um, to behave, how the society, the, the kind of behavior that society sees as norm. So this is where your self-discipline and self-control comes into um, play. Because if you are not able to raise adults from your house, if you're not able to raise them to be self-disciplined individuals, then the children of tomorrow, the leaders of tomorrow, what are we putting out? So you as an individual, as an adult, you cannot underestimate the, the power of being self-disciplined. So um, apart from being self-disciplined for the importance in, in, in the, as an important um, aspect in your, fam in your family life, you also have to look at the importance of self-discipline at your workplace. You don't have to be the um, head of the department or someone in a ruling class for you to have um, self-discipline when whenever you're you, um, doing your, um, your everyday duties. You have to understand that the self-discipline that you show at workplace also translates into how the community sees you, how your um, colleagues will see you. You cannot underestimate the importance of um, self-discipline, especially when you are in, the, uh, the, in charge of resources as a leader. 
if you do not have self-discipline, how do you expect to manage the resources that are meant for the populace? You will just squander it. This is what we are complaining about as um, Americans in general. Leaders tend to just squander the wealth. They tend to deposit it in banks in, uh, outside the country, and it has nothing. It doesn't contribute to any development towards the community uh, of the people that they are supposed to be serving. So this is showing an element of lack of self-discipline in a lot of leaders. That is why they cannot control themselves. They are not able to handle this, the resources according to how it will translate into a better style of living for the people and an upliftment towards the lifestyle, towards, uh, um, how should I say? Yeah, generally towards the um, con condition of the country itself. So if you are able to practice, uh, practice self-discipline from your family life, from your workplace, then when you achieve a leadership role, it will come naturally to you and you will be respected and you will know you will be able to have, um, how should I say, you'll be able to um, put out, um, um, you'll be able to plan out and make sure whatever you plan, the goals are achieved because you are disciplined. You know the importance of planning ahead of time and then you know the importance of going according to how you planned out your goals to achieve them. So you cannot underestimate the importance of self-discipline. And also self-discipline is, um, is an act of love because when you are self-disciplined, you know that when you uh, put out, um, how should I say, when you put out the uh, goals you hope to achieve, and you work towards achieving those goals, you will attain them at, the, um, at a point of almost excellence. Let's take, for example, um, in the medical field, you, 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 you want to do a, a research on um, patients that a lot of patients came from a specific community, and you notice that they with a, um, the same illness, let's say diarrheal disease. Then you, you decide that you want to do research and find out why are people from this community coming with this condition. So you um, end up um, outlining questionnaires, you take permission from the community head, you ask for ethical approval and everything. Then you go into the community, you educate the people on why you are there, you give them questionnaires, you ask them questions, you also educate them on what can cause the disease that you're trying to find out um, by the so rampant in their community. So when you are able to find out the reason, maybe it is uh, where their waterways are polluted, you um, let the council men know they are able to um, prevent the pollution from ongoing. People have learned so much from your interaction because you had goals and you have achieved you have achieved the goals and the goal you achieved was not only for your betterment it was for the betterment of the community as a whole the community that you went in to help the goals that you went in with was a research but you didn't only benefited you didn't the research didn't only benefit you it benefited the community as a whole because you had already planned out goals on what you wanted to achieve. So you're able to educate the community. You were able to tell the community the importance of clean water. We were able to tell the community the importance of um, um, having good health and ways of how to prevent malnutrition in their children. You're able to educate them more about um, how to um, be more sanitary in their waste. So that is the importance of planning out whatever you have to do and you cannot have goals and plans without self-discipline. So that's the little that I would like to talk about that I, I'll talk about that I will divulge on self-discipline. I'm going to move to the next um, analogy, which is patriotism. So um, as we all know, everybody, anybody that belongs to a country, we can't, um, stress how important it is for you to be patriotic of your country. Patriotism is far older than the ideology of um, nationalism, but is somewhat similar because uh, patriotism shows that you have like an, an allegiance to your country. And if we look at the American people, the kind of allegiance that they have towards America is quite adm admir admirable we can see that they are able to put the allegiance towards their country above the differences between them. 
you see black Americans enrolling for um, intuitive, despite what their communities experience day in, day out. This is because the spirit of allegiance, the spirit of patriotism is so strong in the American uh, person's mind. They believe the country comes first before anything else. Africans need to imbibe that for us to save our anatomy. If we are able to imbibe the spirit, that level of spirit of allegiance, you will be surprised what we'll be able to achieve. When you can even see how the development happened in China, in India, how um, they went through the same thing that we did, the overtaking through uh, by the West and then going to the West, they, they gained knowledge that was important to them. They gained knowledge that was beneficial to their community. They, they gained wealth, then they went back to their community to build it up. So we also have to have that ideology in mind. We have to know that Africa is the only place we have. No matter where you go to, you will always be a second class citizen. You have to have that patriotism within. And the way to develop that patriotism, as I stressed earlier, the way to develop practically all of the analogies is through Pan-African education. When you are able to educate an individual about past greatness, that individual is unlikely to be satisfied with being media. It is just inherent. You will see self-hatred will change into self-love. You will see that the person is passionate about wanting to get back that former glory. So that is the, we cannot underestimate the importance of Pan-African education. We cannot under, underestimate the importance of learning from our Pan-African leaders of the past our historians, all of them, we have to find out who, we have to find out their write-ups, their doctrines, we learn about our greatness and it will come a great, a huge way of in influencing our mindset. Why do you think in history, most of the thing, most of what we're being taught is um, the history of black man starting from slavery. It is a deliberate, it's deliberate, it's not just, them just came up like that. It is deliberate. It is a way to break your psyche. It is a way to dampen your subconscious. But knowing this now, because we're able to um, know that um, even individuals, they, you, you can see in American culture, there's a lot of time they, through movies, they are able to depict superheroes in so-called their Marvel movies and stuff like that. Is They know what it does to the psyche of their children. It is not just for entertainment sake. It is deliberate. So they imbibe that pride. Anytime they show a superhero, he looks white, he is American. It is to build up the subconscious level of the child that is watching it to have, make them have pride. Why do you think the first, I'm moving to the movies now, but you understand where I'm getting to. Why do you think the so-called first Avenger was a white man, Captain Rogers? It is not just for entertainment. It's working on the psyche of their children. You have to understand everything that is put out through the multimedia um, channels, it, it has a purpose. It's not just done for the fun of it. So we have to also use that knowledge to also imbibe patriotism, nationalism, self-love into our children use the same tactics, teach them about their past greatness so that they know they come from greatness and so that we plan towards a better present and future for the future generations. We cannot continue waiting for others to do it for us. We have to do it for ourselves. Nobody will do it for you. You do it yourself. You do it for your family. You do it for your nation. You cannot wait for the present day um, government to do it. Everything starts at the grassroots level. You cannot be expecting it to start from the top level. The damage is already been done, but we can correct it. It's up to us as freedom giants to start working towards it through the future generations. And I'm telling you, it can be achievable in within our lifetime. As I told you 10 years ago, all these ideologies were not in place. And we cannot really blame a lot of leaders for being the stooges of the West, because whenever a Pan-African leader comes up trying to bring up the spirit of patriotism in the people of the country, what happens to him? He ends up dying from one uh, coup 
or from one sudden illness that he never had. And we all know the background to all that. We all know the trickery behind it. So when individuals, when more people are patriotic, when more people are willing to die for their country, when more people are able to know what, um, how we were great in the past, when you have self-love for your country, it's unlikely for you to have an individual that will be willing to self, sell his self-worth to kill or to play a hand in the killing of a uh, Pan-African leader. We have people who are more protective of our Pan-African leaders, who will be willing to die for our Pan-African leaders. And this will be the turning point towards the development, towards saving the African anatomy. That is all we need. We already have leaders that are willing to die for the country, but the people are not willing to die for the leaders. We're able to imbibe the self-love and nationalistic love into people, and they know where they are coming from, and they have a goal of what to achieve and where they are going to go to. Then we'll be able to solve our problems. Then all these um, um, but hidden hand killings and stuff of our Pan-African leaders will come to an end. We'll be able to form our table and then call the West to the table and tell them our demands and outline how things are going to be run because Africa is what makes the world move. It does. Africa is the heart of the world. Without Africa, nothing. We are the ones who have the resources. We are the ones who have the arable lands. We have 70% of the world, the entire world arable land, land that can be used for feeding. Why do you think the World Economic Forum has its eye on Africa? We have everything, but they are going towards the 2030 agenda to make sure that before we're able to achieve what um, this Pan-African movement hopes to achieve, they have already put down the rules that is going to benefit them more. We have to make it turn according to our own benefit. We are patriotic, but we, we are willing to uh, help. If to see our future generation achieve what we hope in achieve. We're not going to leave the West out of um, what we plan to do, of course, but we will definitely be against anybody that tries to fight against the uh, future of Africa, a better future for Africa. So this is um, a little bit what I would like about on now I'm going to talk about the, oh, as freedom giants, we cannot underestimate the, we have to imbibe justice in everything we do. We have to make sure we are righteous. We have to make sure everything we do, how, um, how should I say, comfort, comfort. we have to be willing to, uh, address any form of injustice that we come across. We cannot see injustice and then say, okay, it has nothing to do with me. It's not my tribe person affected or it's not somebody of my faith that is affected. Then you are not patriotic. Then you are not a nationalist. You have to know that this individual, we are of the same race, same country, Whatever affects him affects me. You are because I am. That's the spirit of Ubuntu. It was naturally in us in the past. And you know, poverty works so much on the subconscious, so much on the human mind. It brings out the fight or fight mode, whereby you go into only a survival mode of living. So that, that, that is the reason why we have to know the uh, what caused all these issues, why we are we are which is all going to be known through Pan-African education. It's all outlined. You'll be able to know why you are the way you are when you go in Pan-African education and you'll be able to know what you can achieve when you have that knowledge. So you be, when we're able to achieve, when we're able to address what, what led to all this, then we'll be able to know that to some extent, a lot of um, ideals that I in the Western country do not apply to us. We are not like them. Our, our, um, um, our communities and we're never like theirs. Our, even our weather, 
is not like theirs. So we cannot say what applies to them most applied to us. We have to see what is suitable for the African anatomy according to how uh, our communities are and how it can be of benefit to us, like how the industrial revolution was of benefit to them. All they get, they, they have the companies there, they get the resources and the cheap uh, manpower from Africa because we abandon our former ways of mentor and men mentee cheap way of training. In the past, we had families that were known to be, okay, this family is on, uh, uh, at the um, blacksmiths. This family is known at the experts on, on the health um, promotion. This family are experts in so many um, vocational studies. So if you are interested in such, you are sent there to be a mentee under that mentorship. That paid a lot because you, you didn't need like the payment through money. It was a kind of trade by butter payment because we were self-sufficient, self-subsistence. We had everything here, but then we decided to copy a culture that was not of ours. Not that we should ignore it completely. We can inculcate the beneficial aspect that as I told you earlier, China and India did the same, but you should never abandon your culture because you will then be lost. You have to look at the beneficial parts of that culture that you want to learn from and see how it will better serve or make yours better. Not that you abandon your own completely. That is why we are in the mess we are today. That's why you see people are going into universities looking for jobs under the government when you could be a job creator yourself. But we are now going towards a capitalist uh, system that is not pain, it's not pain. It's just going to create more, more uh, people with um, more distance between haves and the have nots. So we have to go back to the grassroots, see how we can revive some of the things that we had practiced for millennia that had been beneficial to us and see how we, in, we can inculcate other aspects from other cultures into ours how it can be improved and then how we can move on from there. We should never abandon our culture. So that's the importance of being um, just, um, just in whatever we are, we are doing. We have to make sure that anywhere that we see anybody that is impartially treated, we have to address it. We have to make sure we are fair, we, we are fair in everything that we do. And um, being just doesn't only mean I so to initially, what I was talking about, I know I created a little, so I'm coming back to the analogy of justice. Being just doesn't mean being just when you are a leader. You have to start, as I said, every scene, charity begins at home. You have to be just between your children. When you are just between your children, your children learn to be just. When they go to school, that um, spirit of justice is within them. So even when a teacher asks, is, um, um, comes across anything that happens in the class and wants to find out who did this and who did this and who is at fault, your child will always, even if it's his friend that is at fault, that is what will impress the teacher. The child will say, yes, it was also and so that started it. Even if that individual is his friend, he will know that justice is more important and surpasses um, being liked by people. So that will even make the teacher know that, okay, I can trust this student and give him a post in the class to be like the class um, headship uh the um what i either a class captain or something like that so you see it's from childhood just imbibing justice within the child makes the child to get a post that will end up making the child even in adulthood to adulthood that justice in him that justice he has imbibed how he practices it outside make others look up to him and say okay this individual is just we can vote him for this we can suggest he should be given this post even if he doesn't come out looking for a position people will speak on his behalf because of that character of being just so and also if uh, when we are um when we are in positions of leadership when you are told when you'll be called upon to be an arbitra and you'll be seen as a just judge whenever you are involved in any cases you will be um, loved by your people, you 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 be spoken of in good ways. You will go from height to height. So you cannot underestimate the importance of being a um, in, imbibing just be, being a just individual in, in in within your 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 psyche. 
So that's why it's very important for us to look into all the analogies, freedom giants, to imbibe them into our everyday life. Um, let me just summarize. So just as a summary, we spoke about the importance of being just in everything you do, being fair to anybody you come across, regardless of who they are, um, imbibing the spirit of justice in your kids so that they can grow up to be just individuals and then they'll be seen as um, models to look up to. Also, you should also be at the topmost position to be a just um, um, a civil servant or so. You can be just in what, wherever you find yourself. Justice can make take you to greater heights. Because when you are just, people will know you as someone that is honest. And then they'll be able to recommend you for higher positions. You also have to look out for individuals that are not as privileged as you that are suffering from any form of injustice. You should be willing to lend your voice out. You should be willing to um, let the world know. You have to be able, willing to stick your neck, neck out for, for the people that are suffering, for people that are not being treated fairly, for marginalized people, for people that do not have the opportunities that you have. You have to be willing to speak out for um, people that are not in a uh, same situation as you are. Uh, like something that we spent President of South Africa and some delegates went, were called upon the, by, I think, the European Union for whatever reason to go to Ukraine and uh, Russia to be an, as intermediaries to speak to the European people's own brothers. Africans were called upon to do that. And I would have seen it as a form of uh, pride, something that Africans should be pride, proud about. But we ignored the injustices that are going on at home, right under our noses, like what is happening in Sudan, where um, our own presidents would have done much more better addressing home issues and then making a huge impact in that addressing before being called upon by the European Union to address other issues. So I don't really see it as something, it, yes, it's an achievement, but it's not something we as Africans should really be proud about. Our brothers and sisters are being are suffering every day. They are being killed all over Africa. And if that is where we should have tried to put our spirit of justice into play. We should have addressed the issues at home first before going out to address other issues. Um, charity as we all know begins at home. Let us address our issues. Take off the fire at home before you go out to other places to help out. So yes, we are, we, we, are, we are found wanting because there are a lot of oppressed and exploited people in Africa where we can lend our voices to address the injustices that are happening to them before going out to address other injustices happening around. So we have to make sure we are just not only um, at home, but also in um, other places. And, when we are just at home, then it will, natu it will come naturally to us to be just in other places, in higher places, in places of, um, like when you are given a leadership role, you, you even be someone that is coveted for a role because you are seen as a just individual. So now I'm going to go to the last analogy. Last but not the least, definitely not the least, is the analogy of excellence. So um, every freedom giant, when called upon, is expected to do his, his or her best. You're expected to give your best at whatever time you are called upon to do something, whether it's um, um, giving a lecture such as this, whether it's called upon to serve the community, whether it's you're called up, no matter how small you think a task is, Give your best because when you give your best, then you will be called upon to do greater tasks. You can not underestimate being called upon to do anything and see it as irrelevant. Try to do your best and you will uh, be seen as someone that can be depended upon. And you can only achieve doing your best when you outline plans for the goals that you hope to achieve. That, as I mentioned earlier, um, in the part of being patriotic and being nationalistic, you have to make sure you have already outlined plans 
on what you want to achieve. When you have outlined plans on what you plan on achieving, then you'll be able to achieve the goals easier. You cannot just say, okay, I'm going to do this. You haven't outlined any plan on how to even go about doing it. That's the importance of planning. You, when you plan out whatever you plan, what, what, whatever you hope to achieve, then you are more likely to achieve it. So you can never underestimate the importance of giving your best in any situation. And also, we if when we give our best, that's when the leadership will be willing to also give their best. That is why I stress the importance of being patriotic. When you are patriotic, then we'll see most of our Pan-African leaders coming up. We have Pan-African leaders. We are, they have not all been killed. When you are willing to give your best wherever you are, your leader will have more confidence. He will have more um, uh, a kind of relief in his people. I know that, okay, yes, I'm willing to die for these people because I know they are willing to do the same for me. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to protect my people, to develop my country, to help my people be uh, something um, of admiration to other set of all these analogies and inculcate them in our everyday life, it is going to spell greater heights for the co country, the community that you are in, the country that you belong, and the continent as a whole. We cannot underestimate the importance of these analogies, the analogies of excellence, justice, patriotism, nationalism. We cannot underestimate them. We have to imbibe them in our everyday work. When we imbibe them in our everyday work, starting from our family life up to our office life, up to any leadership role, uh, role that we are given, then we'll be able to see a difference in the community, in the nation, and in the continent as a whole. The entire mentality will change. And how do we inculcate these analogies into people? It's not only meant for freedom giants, because ev everybody is a potential freedom giant. You are a potential freedom giant because once you have the the, the uh, Africa at heart, once you have the pro progression of Africa at heart, you are a freedom giant. So you have to inculcate all these analogies in everything that you do if you want to see something good come out of it. And I know from personal experience, it works. You have to start. That is the root. You have to start from Pan-African education. Do not underestimate the importance of education. That is why education was the first thing that was addressed. That is why our syllabus was the first thing that was addressed. Our syllabus is um, arranged by the Rockefeller Foundation. Imagine that it's not even arranged from our own setting. Do you think it just, just happened like that? There is, the importance of education cannot be underestimated. You know the importance of knowledge. Everybody knows the importance of knowledge. The knowledgeable person is very, very different from someone that is not on the same line with him. You, When you know something, you are better equipped to know how things work and how to address issues, how to address problems, how to solve problems. So you cannot underestimate the importance of Pan-African knowledge, especially in the aspect of African people. Knowing where you came from is the most important thing to know how to get to excellence. Knowing your past greatness, knowing our past dynasties, our past kingdoms, is the most important way to imbibe self-love in the hearts of African, especially the hearts of African children. When you know what you were capable of, what your past, where your past ancestors were capable of, then you will have more zeal to want to achieve that. And then you'll be able to achieve that through imbibing all these analogies. So you can see how they all relate with one another. Pan-African education is the first, and then using the analogies to be able to pass across how to make Africa better for every African man, woman, and child. So um, we have to start working on the analogies. We have to start working on the importance of Pan-African education because that is the solution to everything. Not as we think, you cannot even address our economic problem if you do not know the <laughs> Pan-African education on or behind economics. You cannot address uh, anything, any problem in Africa without knowing the Pan-African education behind it. 
So that is why it's very important Pan-African education cannot be underestimated towards the building and the promotion of the African economy. So I would like to, um, I'm coming to an end, to uh, this, I've come to the end of the topic and I would like to thank the Global Freedom Board for giving me this opportunity to speak on a, such an important topic. I hope I was able to pass across a bit of um, knowledge and how important it is for us to um, inculcate the um, spirit of nationalism, discipline, patriotism, justice, and excellence in everything that we do. So thank you very much. Um, this is Freedom Legend Halim Abdul Karim Haliru. I'll be signing off. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and thank you all for who attended the, the lecture. Freedom Libre.